All right, in this video, we're going to cover uh, another subscriber request, and uh, this is what the question is being asked. Um, they've made a circle button, and then they have a circle that pops up. They've also made, through the same technique, a music player that pops out whenever the circle that pops out is pressed, I'm assuming. Um, the problem is that when I close the pop-out circle and opens it later the music player comes back already open so here's the question how do you make the music player or that rectangle or whatever disappear when you close the master circle um, and that's what we're going to cover in this video and it involves using the text global variable that's one way you can do this there are multiple ways of doing this but this is the one way I'm going to show you in this video so down here we have our master circle let me go ahead and uh, go into KLWP and make this full screen so um, here's what they want this is the master circle so I've, I've got a little button nothing but a shape and then um, just for the sake of the video to show you a few more things I got a stack group up here um, this stack group has like two other little buttons that we're going to press right here in a minute um, M for music and C for clock and basically when we press this button we want this to come out and then when this comes out, we can press M to make this pop up somehow. Or if we press the C, we can make this pop up somehow. But uh, if we ever press this button right here, we want um, the these to close down so that when we open these back up, they're not there. And that may sound kind of crazy, but uh, here's what we're going to do. Uh, go over to globals, and let's just add one global variable. And I'm going to call it go just for... Um, sake of easy typing I guess um, so there we go and let's set this variable right now to zero I like using numbers because um, it's just real easy to cycle between them and stuff like that and typing them in so our text global variables set to zero now let's think of zero as making everything go away um, so master circle I'm gonna go ahead and apply a touch to this master circle I want this master circle, so let's go over to touch, and I'm going to go to my cell phone to type this code in. Um, this is me just messing around with it. Uh, let me add a new one, so go to toggle global switch, and we want to toggle the switch go. So um, basically what we want here is um, I either want this thing to change that text global variable either to zero or to one. So here's how we can do that when we touch that master circle. We can say if gv go is equal to zero, you want to make it a one, otherwise you want to make it a zero. So basically when we touch this thing, it's going to toggle that text global variable between a one and a zero. Essentially it's an on off switch. Um, and like I said, you could do this multiple ways. but when I press this button, if it's equal to zero, it's going to make it a one. If it's not zero, it's going to make it a zero. So it's going to go back and forth between one and zero. And to make sure that we understand this, let's just go ahead and do um, some testing purposes. So i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to here, to the root. I'm going to add some text. And let's go to that text. And I'm just going to position this near the bottom. Where is it at? Dag on it. Oh, I didn't never. I never put it at the bottom. All right. So there's our text, making a little bit bigger, and I'm just going to say, um, "Go is just to test GV go." So let's just test this out and see what we have. So go is zero. Remember I said we we're going to toggle back and forth between zero and one. This is the first step. So when we press this, one. Now we press it again, bam, it goes back to zero. So this little switch here is an on off switch. It's going to go back and forth between zero and one. Um, whoops, too many presses. But now here's what we want to happen. When go is one, I want this to come out. And I want this thing to stay out unless go is zero. When I, when I press this thing here and go is zero, I want everything to go away. And we're going to build up to that. So let me go back into KOWP. And now what I want to focus on is making the buttons come out. So uh, the stat group, 
I got right here. Basically, I got two overlap groups inside of a stack group. And, you know, I got this circle with the M and this circle with the C. So I want this entire group to animate. So I'm going to animate. We're going to react on a uh, formula. And then you might say, why don't we react on a global switch? If I go to react on and I choose global switch, um, there's no global of that type because um, the global switch is really like an on-off thing. And since I'm using a text global, I want to uh, react based on a formula. And remember, we want this thing to, th this is our buttons, the M and the C. We want this thing to always show as long as that text global is not zero. So here's how you do this. If GV go is not equal, so exclamation point uh, equal. If GV go is not equal to zero, we want to animate this thing. So remember, um, a one is going to bring it forward and then, oh man, hang on. Yeah, and then otherwise we want to move it back. Let's see, maybe I messed that up. Let me see, let me check something here. React on formula. Yeah, okay. This formula will be used as a switch. When its output is 1 or F, the animation will move forward. When it's 0 or B, the animation will move backwards. So if the global variable, that text global variable go is not 0, meaning it can be any other thing in the whole wide world. If it's not 0, we want this animation to move forward. Um, but if it is 0, we want it to go back because 0 will move that animation back. Now keep in mind here, I could definitely do a F for forward and a B for backwards. Um, just you know, paying attention to what we have. Um, right, well, it's gone now because that's what I was talking about a few seconds ago. But F or one moves it forward, zero or B moves it back. So what type of animation do we want to happen? We want this thing to scroll. I think scroll will be fine. I want it to kind of like slide down from the top. If I press play right now, it's scrolling you know, that way. I've talked about this in other videos. What angle I'm thinking we want it to be at like a 270. And boom, okay. Now, if I save this right now, it's not gonna do what I want it to do. But I'll tell you what, this is trial and error. So go is zero. When, I, when go becomes something that's not zero, such as one, it's going to uh, bring this out. But notice it takes it away. So how do we fix that? We need to invert. We need to invert this thing. So let's go back and fix that. Back in the KOWP. Um, that animation, let's just scroll inverted. Bam. That is going to... No, hold up. Leave that on scroll, my bad. And put ease to invert it. There we go. Now it's a way this is going to work. So saving. And going back to the home screen. So now go is zero. Remember, if go is not zero, I want this thing to slide out. So bam, there we go. And if I press it again, now, since go is zero, it's going back to where it came from. That's that whole code I just typed in. So we got that going uh, nice and nice and fine. Now, here's the cool thing, though. When we start changing, now we'll change this text global variable go. I'm going to change it to like a two and a three. Um, for example, two, I'm going to let the music come out. Three, I'm going to let the clock come out. But during that time, this thing here is never going to go away because this thing will always be here as long as the text global, global variable uh, go is not zero. Right now it's one, so it's, it's, it's still going to show. So if we make it two or if we make it three, it's still going to be showing because it's not zero. So let's go back into KOWP and let's start doing some other things. Uh, back in root music. All right, let's animate this whole music rectangle square uh, component piece. This is just something that's built into KOWP. And I want this to animate based on a formula. And I'm pretty much going to do a kind of a similar formula, um, but except now I'm going to say if GV go is equal to 2. So GV go is equal to 2. We want to move it forward. Otherwise, we want to move it back. Now remember, 
Um, we could do Fs. This is what I did a while ago. Now I have it showing one or F right there means forward. Zero or B moves it back. So that's exactly what I want this thing to do. I tell you what, I'll have this one scrolling as well. But since, you know, up here I was talking about we want to scroll but ease, we want to invert it. Basically, I don't want to see this thing right now. And which way do we want it coming from? I want it coming from the left-hand side. So I need to change this thing to 180 degrees. So if the global variable becomes two, it's going to do something like that. And it's going to move it back if it's not two. Now, how do we apply this? Well, we need to set a touch back on our little circle M. Notice uh, circle M, that's that little button that comes down up here. I want it, when I touch this, I want it to set a global variable or the text global variable. So uh, toggle global switch, we want to change that switch. And whenever I press this M, that's inside of the circle up here, I want it to automatically make that text global variable two. Because remember, this, the music player, we said if the text global variable is equal to two, we want this thing to animate. So um, I'll tell you what, we need to save this, and we should be in business with the music player. So go is zero. So if go is zero, this thing's not gonna be showing because of the way we you know, tweaked our animation and this thing, the music player is not showing either. So when I press this, that's going to make it one. One is going to bring this out. Now remember, this thing right here will stay right here as long as this text global variable go is not zero. Touch the master circle. Look, it went back to zero. This thing went away. Touch it again. One is back. Now when we press this, we should change this thing to a two and watch our music player come out. There we go. Now what's gonna happen if I touch this thing again? I have this thing right here set to, if, uh, if I touch that, it's gonna automatically make it a two. Here's the question the subscriber had. They said when they close the whole thing, um, when they close the whole thing, and then when they opened it back up, the music player was back. Well notice when I open this thing back up, the music player is not there. I'm just getting my buttons back. The only way I can get my music player back is to touch that right there. Bam. And it's all linked to one text global. This thing down here is either going to make this text global variable a zero or a one. So bam, it makes it a zero. Touch it again, it makes it a one. There's our music player. Whoops. This is me using my computer. Touch, touch the music player. It's coming out. Now let's tweak the clock. And let me show you how all this stuff can work nicely together. So back inside of KLWP, let's apply. I'm going to go to animation, and I'm actually going to copy that animation I just did. And I'm going to apply it to um, the clock. Now, obviously, we got to tweak this thing a little bit. We want it to scroll inverted, but we want to change our angle back to zero. Now, obviously, we don't want the clock to come out the same time that the music player does. So back up here in our formula, let's, um, oh, which animation did I just copy if it's not equal to zero? Actually, I just copied over the, the button thing that comes out at the top of the screen. But I tell you what, we can fix this. If GV go is equal to three, notice we've used a zero, a one, and a two. Um, but we haven't used a three yet. So uh, I want my clock to animate when my text global variable is equal to three. I want it to move forward, I want it to move back if it's not. Or we can do a one and a zero. So let me check that. And now how do we apply that? How do we make our text global variable go become three? I want to touch that C that's up here in our uh, little button thing that we have. So going to stack group. I want to touch this overlap group that I have the C and the circle in. So I'm going to go to touch. I'm going to add, and let's toggle a global switch. The only one we have is go, and let's make it become a three. So check. Let's save it, and now let's save the entire thing, and let's have a test. Now keep in mind, one text global variable is controlling all this stuff. 
So right now, go is zero. I think of that as being off. I cut this switch on, it's gonna make these things come up. Now these things right here, these buttons will always be showing as long as go is not zero. That's the code that we typed in for this animation up here. So if I press M, that's gonna make go become two. Well, there's my music player. If I press C, it's gonna make this go become three. Watch, boom, see, go becomes three. Now my clock's sliding out. Now I can cycle back and forth between these things and the reason why one of them's going away and the other one is coming in because this one is only set to move forward or out and show when go is two. Well, that's exactly what we have. Now when I touch this, this makes go become three. That's gonna make this one animate. Notice the other one went back because go is no longer two. Now here was the big question they had. They said, okay, well when I close my master circle, boom, and then if they open it back up, they were saying the music player was coming back. But by us linking all of these things together into one text global and just basically, you know, um, using uh, GV go for a zero, a one, a two, or a three, each thing's going to operate uh, independently of the other based on how we have our formula set up. But there you have it, you know. Um, go is one. Let's get our music. There's go is three, there's our clock. We press this, it's gonna automatically make the go become zero. And there you have it, that is how you can uh, hide something based on you know touching a, a set of buttons and still have it hidden when you go back to your master circle. And that's it for this video, hope it helped.